So we'll go ahead and get started. Thank you all for coming tonight. My name is Chuck Cazetto. I'm the district superintendent. Appreciate you coming to learn a little bit more about the levy. One uh, quick announcement and a couple introductions and we'll get started. The announcement is we are recording this and streaming this live tonight. So what we'd like to do, if possible, is hold your questions until the end of the presentation, and then we'll stay around as long as you want and go back to whatever slides you want to answer those questions. And then second, a couple introductions. I'd like to introduce a couple school board members. Rand Wilhelmsen, our school board president, right here. Deb Krishna Dawson, one of our school board members back there. Uh, so now let me introduce the staff that will be kind of going through the levy information with you tonight. Just walking through the door is Kathy Wade Miller. She's our director of community outreach. On my left is John Helwick. He's our assistant superintendent for learning and teaching. Dan Gregory is our assistant superintendent for K-12 education and school improvement. And then to start us off is our chief financial officer, Karen Anderson. So Karen, I'll turn it over to you. Welcome, welcome. It's nice to have a few people in the audience. Um, tonight we're going to discuss the levy and we're going to give you some information about our continuing educational programs and operations parentheses, M&O levy. Um, we want to talk a little bit about the title right from the get-go. Um, over time, this used to be um, an M&O maintenance and operations levy, and people were misled thinking that it was just for facilities. And so over time, as school districts became more dependent on their levies to help run basic education because we aren't fully funded by the state, they started to identify why we really need these levies. And this is really, it's to maintain and operate our current programs, our educational programs, along with maintaining our facilities. So over time, we have changed the title. Um, the last couple of times, we've called it the ed Educational Programs and Operations Levy. And this is a continuance because this is basically a renewal of what we've already done. The current four-year levy expires in 2016, and we're asking to renew it for another four years and to continue it on. Thus, the title, so to explain that a little bit. With the um, levy proposal, um, we wanted to talk about estimated tax rates. Um, Currently, the, S the tax rate for 2016 is $2.30 per $1,000 of assessed value. That is what the current levy is, is costing our taxpayers. When we took our proposals for levy amounts to the board, they massaged that and they took into consideration the fact that we have 75% of our population is retired folks. People that don't have kids in schools and are more on fixed incomes. And we want to make those people aware that we're trying not to gouge our taxpayers. We're trying to run our business, maintain what we're doing currently, and until the state fully funds basic education, we need dollars to continue doing what we're doing. So we took our current year, our current levy spending plan, we inflated it for uh, future costs, what we anticipate for future costs and future needs. And based on that, we devised the dollar amounts that we need and backing in our estimated assessed value for each year, we come up with these tax rates. So we purposely downgraded the dollar amount that we're going to ask for in 2017, starting with a lower tax rate. And hopefully, projecting <coughs> that we're gonna have a lower tax rate for the next four years. The levy covers 24% of our operating budget. Um, the other 67 or 76% is state and local, or state and federal funding. Um, we know that um, there's a lot of questions out there about the McCleary and whether or not the legislature is going to fully fund basic education. At this point, we don't know what's going to happen. So we are very dependent on these levy funds in order to keep um, doing the things that we're doing in our schools. So if 
So with 24% riding, um, this, this levy is really critical to our day-to-day -day operations in um, Peninsula School District. We're gonna talk a little bit about how we spend the levy dollars and we've kind of categorized those and we'll give you some examples of how we're using current levy dollars and how we propose to spend them in the future. 78% of our levy supports staffing. It's either classified staffing or certificated. Um, the state does not fully fund all of our staff. Um, with, so our staff that it, our staffing costs, about two thirds of our staffing costs for certificated employees are covered with state and federal funds. The rest is covered with um, levy. For our classified, only about half of our classified costs are covered with um, state and federal funds. <coughs> One of the categories that we have for safety and security is safety and security. We have a lot of expenditures that we use levy dollars for. Um, Kathy and Dan, do you want to give some examples? Sure. You want me to go ahead? Um, Having uh, safe and secure campuses for our students and staff is one of our board goals. It's one of our highest priorities. Uh, for students to learn well, we want them to feel safe, and for staff to do their, the work that we want them to do, um, they need to feel safe as well. Um, recently, a couple summers ago, we had a uh, assessment of all of safety for all of our campuses. We identified, that person who did that assessment for us identified some areas in which we can improve in terms of safety for our students. Um, recently, through levy dollars, we have put access control systems in all eight of our elementary schools. One actually existed at Purdy Elementary, but we put that one within the same system as the other seven. So now at all eight of our elementary schools, we have access control systems. And at our four middle schools and here at Henderson Bay High School, we also have access control systems on our front doors. And what that means is when school starts, those front doors lock and they remain locked until, until the end of the school day. Anybody wanting to access the building during that time through the front doors pushes a button and um, their picture comes up. There's a camera near that button and their picture comes up and people in the office have the opportunity to identify them and ask them what their business is. And if they're not a threat and they're people that we know and they're coming in to do business that we, that we um, support, then we buzz them into the door. But what it does is it provides one more barrier, one more layer of safety for our students and staff. Um, all of those systems are live at our eight elementary schools. They have been installed at our middle schools in Henderson Bay and will be live soon. Um, additionally, we've uh, done some security camera work and tied those into our technology system as well. Going forward, we want to increase those systems, we want to maintain the systems we have and increase those systems as well. Um, our work in those two areas is really in its infancy and we really need to continue to expand. Um, one of the things when we, when we started this project was we wanted to make sure, number one, the systems that we chose were compatible with our technology network, and number two, they were expandable because we wanted to do it in phases. Um, one other important resource we have to keep our students and staff safe as well as our campuses is we have a contract with the Pierce County Sheriff's Office and they provide what's called a school resource officer for us. And levy funds pay for us to have that school resource officer accessible to all 15 of our buildings any time throughout the day. And so those are very important safety and security measures. Kathy has done a lot of coordination um, in terms of emergency management and training of staff, so I'll let her comment on those two things. Um, we have two things that we're especially excited about. We work really closely with um, Pierce County Department of Emergency Management to make sure that um, what we're giving our staff is up-to-date best practice um, in pretty much all hazards or, or all possible concerns that could come up. And our, with the help of our consultant and the DEM people, um, we're working to comprehensively train and retrain all of our staff um, more than one time a year to make sure that um, people are prepared and know what to do um, in a variety of incidents and know how to keep kids safe and also know how to prepare the kids for any type of incident. We routinely drill, we routinely practice and um, you know do everything we can so if there is a bad day we are um, ready to go. 
Um, one last thing that came out of our security assessment that you'll probably see as you look at any of our schools is we've really worked hard to um, work with our maintenance department to trim trees so our sight lines are good, so we can see what's going on, we can see who's coming and going, things are well lit, our fences are repaired, holes in, holes in the fences are no more, and um, we're just we're really excited about visible changes that we were able to do um, with, with existing resources through our levy funds. Another thing, just so that you're aware, we have a security plan and we're working in phases, so future levy dollars will also be um, dedicated towards security and expanding these plans and carrying them out. We have a category maintenance projects. This is actually a line item in our levy spending plan for maintenance projects, and that could be minimum, smaller projects, you know, fifty, sixty thousand um, dollars, but it could be larger projects. Um, we don't have capital funding or resources to um, charge capital projects fund for some of the major, big um, projects. So we're we're basically doing smaller projects on a smaller scale. Some of our roofs that need to be repaired, we're not able to repair the whole roof, so we're. We're repairing the significant patches that need to be done or sections that need to be done. Um, we don't have the funding to do an entire roof. An example, um, several years ago, we repaired um, the middle part of the discovery roof. Um, there are two more sections of that metal roof that need to be replaced, and we've been monitoring them and making sure that we don't have leaks, but at some point, we are going to have to replace the other two sections. And so we're monitoring that. And it may be that because it costs so much to repair those metal roofs, we may do one section and then the following section the next year. So we're monitoring those types of things. We're identifying projects and trying to do repair projects that will not just be a quick fix and a temporary fix, but that will last and, and prolong the life of the building or or that piece of the building um, to protect and basically keep it going. Um, so we have a lot of projects each year that we line up and as things come up, sometimes those projects get bumped down a little bit and we have to take, we have to address the, criti the more critical needs. Um, so we do have the projects that, and they're all funded through levy. Um, another piece of maintenance is that um, we have maintenance workers, HVAC um, workers. Um, those are also supported with levy funds. About half of our classified staff are supported with um, levy funding. Another area, curriculum and programs. Uh, John, I think, was going to share some specifics under this category. So um, one of the big expenses in curriculum and instruction is textbooks. And especially with new standards in all of our major core subject areas, reading, writing, math, and uh, coming up science. Um, technology has kind of changed the textbook world. It used to be you know, the physical textbooks that you had when you went to school. Um, more and more of those are becoming outdated and will soon be completely outdated. Uh, instead, you access the same information on a device, whether it's an iPad or a PC or a Chromebook. And the, the, the great thing about that is when you used to buy a set of encyclopedias or a, or a world history book, they were outdated as soon as you bought them. Now, those are updated, they're interactive, they have multimedia. Um, and so even though we're not going to be buying these big textbooks anymore, the costs are still there for the licenses to access these textbooks on, in a virtual way and those, those licenses are paid for by our, by our levy. Um, and it's not just the core areas, we also support our arts, and so for things like art supplies and musical instruments, um, many of our musical instruments are rented by the families, but for harder to rent instruments, we do make purchases and replacements for those. We also have some pro programs that we think are really cool for kids. Uh, one of them is called AVID, that's a program designed to help support students who uh, have the potential to go to college, but might just need a little extra support to get there. And we've just introduced that program at two of our schools this year, and we'll be um, 
making a pitch to the board to ex expand that program. Project Lead the Way is a um, STEM, which stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. And it's a program that trains teachers and provides curriculum in some areas that are a little less traditional than your normal science and math tracks. Um, a couple of examples are introduction to biomed and human body systems. And uh, those allow students to access those types of classes that might not have been uh, as interested in some of our more traditional math and science track classes. And, and just in supporting our graduation rates, uh, the state has um, pushed the graduation credit requirement up to 24, and our district and board supported that. Uh, that doesn't give students, students much wiggle room, so we have to put in a lot of supports, including more summer school, after school programs, um, some flexibility in, for kids to do credit recovery, and all of those things are funded by the levy as well. So those are a few things in curriculum and programs that, that our levy supports. Technology is an important factor and it really it, it really flows well out of curriculum. John talked uh, previously about online textbooks. Um, more and more our students are accessing the materials they need to learn through online sources as, appo as opposed to out of textbooks. Um, also, uh, several years ago, the state started to require that all of the mandated testing grades three through 10 be done on computer. And so all of those students need to test on computer within a particular window on the calendar. Um, however, the state did not provide any funding to support the technology necessary for students to do that. And so several years ago, we started buying several Chromebook carts, 30 to 33 computers in a cart that you could plug into a wall, charge overnight, and students use during the day. Um, as we purchase several of those Chromebook cards, the first couple of years, we'd take them to one school, the students would do their required testing, we'd pack them up and we'd run them over to another school, those students would do their testing, so it was a shuffle of carts around the district just to get the testing, the state required testing done. Um, we've been continually supporting the idea of students using that more using those more and more on a daily basis for their regular classroom work and that was required more and more devices and so right now on the key peninsula we actually have um, all of our students grades three through five on what we call a one-to-one -one setup so each one of those students grades three through five has their own laptop and they'll come in in the morning and access their laptop it's kind of like hang up your backpack and your jacket and pick up your laptop. Um, we also have that same situation for sixth graders at Key Peninsula Middle School. We hope to continue to expand that because that is the means by which our students as they go through K-12 and beyond, that's what we have to prepare them for. That's what their real world is going to be like, not only educationally, but likely in whatever career they choose. And so having levy support for the, for the uh, continuation and su of support as well as expansion of those kind of things is very necessary for us to move forward. Um, we talked about assessment and I'll have John refer back to some of the software associated with some of the curriculum adoptions that we've done as well. So yeah, they, we know that the state testing is done online but so is a lot of our just curriculum based assessments. So some of those um, types of online textbooks that I talk about uh, that's not just accessing information, but they also often are doing their assessments on those uh, devices. I think we have, uh, Ron, you can correct me, but around 700 plus total devices in the district now. And again, it'd be nice seven, to keep 7,000. 7, 7, that's what I meant. 7,000, <laughs> sorry. Um, and, uh, it, and again, those are important for all of the day-to-day -day, uh, teaching and assessing that, that kids do in addition to the state testing that Dan referenced. And staffing-wise, I don't know if we want to hit that later or hit it now, but yes, one and a half. One and a half of our staff for technology is funded by basic ed. Uh, we have 14, I believe, total staff in the technology department, and so 12 and a half of those are funded by the levy. So when you think about all of those devices out, all of the support and infrastructure with our networking, um, and if the security that you saw, all of those things are supported by our technology staff, uh, and that staff is, is funded almost entirely by the way. I just wanted to make a comment. Um, back in 2003, we passed a bond, a $45 million bond, and with that, we bought a significant number of devices 
that were put into schools. Those are all obsolete at this point in time and we have been removing them from classrooms and from um, libraries and from labs. And with the levy funding, we've set up a replacement cycle to where we couldn't do everything at once. And what we realized is that we can't buy everything at once because then it goes dead at, all at once. So we purposely have started this cycle so that we're buying a certain number of Chrome cards each year so that we're cycling through and that hopefully in five to seven years we'll be back and cycling through when the, the old Chromebooks go out of existence or are no longer usable. And then we've, we've created hopefully a sustainable um, way of providing technology, updated technology within our schools. So I just kind of wanted to throw that out a little bit. Athletics. Um, it's very important that our students not only learn in the classroom throughout the day and have good role models as teachers and administrators, but we also want them involved in positive things outside of school. And some of those things outside of the school day are our are, are school athletics. Um, there they uh, get a tremendous amount of exercise depending upon what, it is, what, uh, what um, activity they're doing. But they also interact, learn to work as a team, and have very positive role models in their coaches. Athletics are funded a, a, fair, a very large portion by the levy. We're talking about coaches stipends, we're talking about equipment for the different sports, um, we're talking about transportation to and from games, whether that's at the middle level where they travel within the district or whether that's at the high school level whether, where they travel within their different leagues. Um, but a very large portion of that is, is levy funded. And again, um, we want all of our students to be well-rounded students. This is one way they access that. They also, again, learn to work as a team and work with their coaches who are really fine role models for them. So athletics is another important component of, of our levy funding. Professional development. So if you think about kind of, like, let's look it through the eyes of a math teacher. So I've got new standards to teach and the standards are more rigorous. So I've got to figure out how I'm going to get my students over an even higher bar than before. I'm doing it with a new curriculum that I need to get familiar with. That new curriculum is often done no longer out of a textbook, but on, out of a device. And I need to use the technology to help the students get there. That's a lot of change for our teachers. And they need time to, to be trained and be familiar with those systems so that they can be, help our kids be successful. And it used to be that the state gave us some training days to help with that. They no longer do. There's zero training days that are funded by the state. So those training days come out of our levy. Uh, whether it's before school gets started, we have some, a day during the year when, when teachers are trained, and also um, we do some sub-release uh, so that teachers can um, come and work with our trainers. Uh, we have five uh, teachers on special assignment, which are um, <coughs> teachers, excuse me, who are released to help train. And, and those uh, facilitators are specialists, whether it's math or elementary ed, highly capable technology. We have some uh, trainers that help do plan those trainings and, and um, help our teachers uh, as they are trying to adapt to all of this change. And those facilitators are also paid by the levy. Um, and you know, each building, they really look at their data every year and they'd say, okay, we really need to focus on maybe seventh grade math or whatever it is this year. And uh, the, the training that those teachers need to help ramp up in that area, um, those that we refer to as school improvement plans, those need, are also funded by the levy. Certificated staffing. I'll jump in and just give a description and invite anybody. I mean, we all interact with our certificated staff all the time. Um, who are our certificated staff members? Oftentimes people go, okay, those are your teachers. But it goes beyond teachers. It's our teachers. It's our counselors. It's uh, for students who need occupational therapy or physical therapy. We have those services available to them. School nurses, administrators. Um, Approximately two-thirds of the costs, salaries, and benefits for certificated staff is covered by the state. The rest is covered a little bit by uh, federal, but 
Primarily, most of the other third uh, are levy funded. And again, that salaries and benefits for a wide variety of staff, one third of those costs are, are covered through levy funding. Um, I can have John maybe talk, or, or Karen talk specifically about some of the things related to the programs around those. So, um, the, the, some of the staff that um, Dan mentioned, in addition to that, um, we also added, needed to add some additional staff this year as we ramped up from four day a week uh, kindergarten to five day a week. And the state, um, for five of our schools, only pays for two and a half days a week. So, we're helping to fund kindergarten and the staffing that goes with that. Also, we have, uh, we want our principals and all of our teachers to be working on getting kids to standards, to helping students learn. And sometimes behavior of students can get in the way. So our counselors are helping with that, our school psychs, but we also have deans of students in our building these year, uh, over the last couple of years we've added some deans of students who deal primarily with the behavior issues so that the other staff can, can be working on the learning aspects. And it's really important when we talk about salaries and benefits and approximately a third of that is covered. It's really important for us to keep the best people possible at the front of our classrooms in front of those kids. And so without having that kind of support, it really makes it difficult for us to be competitive in an already dwindling market for teachers. We already have a teacher shortage. And so it's really important for us to, to be able to attract the best, but not just attract the best, but keep the best people in front of our students. <laughs> classified staffing. Um, for classified staffing, um, about half of the cost for staff for classified staffing is covered by state. The other is covered under federal or um, levy. Classified staff involve a variety of people. It could be grounds, it could be maintenance, it could be our paras in classrooms, it could be our front desk people in the schools, it could be people up at the district office. Um, it, there's a variety of um, classified staffing across the board um, that can be funded um, with levy funding and with state funding. So um, about half of the funding that we receive from, from for classified staffing is from the state, and the rest is from other categories, either federal or local. So again, 24% of our operating budget, day-to-day -day operating budget, is, is funded through the levy. And until the state fully funds basic education, we are reliant on this. Um, and the goal of McCleary for the state is to take away that reliance so that we are not asking for as much. We're only asking for what we might want to do over and above basic education. Um, it should be an excess levy that we're asking for, and it's not. Right now, it's a, it's a basic it's to help provide basic education. And until the state fully funds basic education, we still need um, local support. Okay. 